of the data. So think of it as a type of syllabi. Now, because statistics are syllabies, it means that they make it a lot easier to see what's going on with the data and perhaps make it easier to understand once you know what those statistics are telling you. The statistics can also help you to solve problems and plan and make informed decisions. So that is what statistics bring to the party. So what I will do now is go and share my screen so that we can get to work with generating some. So I have got here my version of the demos workbook. And if I just make this a little bit bigger for you, you can see that I have got customer data. So I have got a first row along the top, which gives headings. And then I have got customer initials. I've got their age. I've got the gender. I've got the drink that they have ordered and also the tip amount that they have left for me. So what we want to do is just begin to analyse this data. Now, when you have got a bunch of raw data like this, probably the first thing that you will want to do is to convert it into a table. A table is useful because it will just help to keep your data together. In particular, it will keep each row together because you don't want those rows to get mixed up in any way because that will then mess up the statistics that you generate. So what I will do is go into A1. We then need to select all of that data, which we can do by pressing Control A like that. Then we go to the insert menu and then I'll choose the option that says table like that. It asks me where the data is for the table, and because I selected all of the data before I said I wanted to insert the table, it's chosen everything for me correctly. And it's also spotted that that first row contains headers. So what I can do is just click on OK, and that will convert that data into a table like so. So if you're not familiar with tables, you will notice that it's changed the colour, and we have also got these little drop-down arrows at the top. What these will do is let you do things like sort your data and filter it. Now, the next thing for us to notice about this data is that there are actually two different types of data there. First of all, we have got numbers. So we've got the age and the tip amount. Now, when you have got numbers in statistics, that is really called quantitative data. So think of it in terms of quantities. They tend to be data that is countable or measurable, and it will answer questions like how many, how often, how much, that sort of thing. So it will typically be things like height and weight. So that's your number-based quantitative data. Then we have got more text-based data, so we've got gender and drink. And because that text-based data tends to deal more with qualities, it's known as qualitative data. Now, this will include things like native language, qualifications, and it's perhaps a little bit more subject, subjective and, and descriptive. Now, the reason for me pointing out these two different data types is that it does make a difference on how you generate statistics. Where you have got number-based quantitative data, you can perform calculations. So you can perform those calculations to generate statistics in that way. Where you have got text-based qualitative data, you can't perform calculations, but what you can do is group it into categories and themes. Now, if we move along to the next tab, you will see that I have drawn out some of the qualitative data. So I've got the customer initials and I have also got the drinks. Now, when you have got qualitative data like this, so text-based, probably what you will first want to do is 
divide it into categories, so in this case the different drinks, and then find out how many there are in each category, so get the count. Now the easiest way of doing this within Excel is to use a pivot table. So what we'll do is first of all make sure that I am somewhere in the table, it doesn't matter where. Then I'll go up to the insert menu and then I'll choose the pivot table option like that. Now it selected the table for the data which is good. I now need to put it in the existing worksheet right into D1 like that just so that I can see my data and the pivot table side by side. So I will now click on OK and there is our pivot table. Now the next thing that we need to do is tell the pivot table what to display and we're interested in seeing how many items there are for each drink. So I will pick up drink and put that under rows like so and that will display all of the drinks within that drink column like that. Coffee, cola, matcha, OJ and tea. And then to find out how many there are of each of them, I can take one of these and put them into values. So I will pick up customer, drop that into values like so. And notice that because the customer contains text data, it has defaulted to saying the count of customer. Now in statistics speak, when you have got the count of something, it's called the frequency. So what I can do here is double click on the heading for the count of customer. That brings up my field settings and I can now change the name from count of customer to frequency like so. And I can also double check that it is summarizing the data using count. So that all looks good. So I can now just click on OK and I have got my frequencies for the qualitative text-based data. So we can now take a look at this and see that the drink with the highest frequency will be coffee at 14 and the one with the lowest frequency will be matcha on 7. Now because this is a pivot table, what I can do is display this visually on a pivot chart. So I make sure that I'm in my pivot table. I go up to the pivot table analyze menu and then right on the very right I select the option called pivot chart like that. It very handily puts the chart right over my data so let me just change that a bit so I can see things better like that. And there we have got the chart showing the frequencies of our drink data. So as we can see, we have got coffee at the highest frequency and matcha as the lowest. Now, I think with that, before we move on to looking at the quantitative data, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that we can review some of that. What we have seen then, is statistics are important because they are really summaries of your data. They are values that characterise some sort of aspect of your data set. Because they're summaries, statistics can make it easier to understand what's going on, just so long as you know what that statistic means. And they can also help you to solve problems and plan and make informed decisions. Now, when you have got raw data, what tends to be really helpful is just organising it in a table. It will help keep data together and you can also sort and filter the data easily. The other advantage is that it makes it a lot easier to work with things like charts and pivot tables. Now we've seen that there are two different types of data in, on the whole. We have got the quantitative data which is numbers based. So it's data that is countable or measured. It answers how many, how often, how much. And examples would be height, weight, number of support tickets perhaps, score, that sort of thing. Then for qualitative data, this is more text based and will describe qualities. So it's a little bit more subjective 
and open to interpretation. And then it will include things like name, native language, qualifications, that sort of stuff. Now, the reason why the different types of data are important is because you usually need to use a different approach with each type. So quantitative data involves numbers, so you use it for calculations, and qualitative data involves text, so you group that into categories and themes. And then we had an example of when we had some qualitative text-based data and we wanted to find the frequency or count of each item. So the easiest way of doing this is to use a pivot table. And once you've got a pivot table showing you the frequencies or counts, you can then use a pivot chart to display them. Now, I think before we go any further, I think it would be a good idea for you to have an exercise for you to just have a go at that for yourselves. So what I want you to do is make sure that you've downloaded the exercises workbook and then go to the first tab. On that tab, you should see some, a table of data that looks like that. It contains customers and their food orders. I want you to create a pivot table that uses food for the rows and customer for the values using count. And I would like you to use that to tell me what the frequency is of pizza and which item has the highest frequency. When you've got the answers to those, please drop them into the chat so I can see how you're getting on. And I'll switch my mic off and leave you to get on with that in peace and quiet for let's say around three minutes. And then after that time, I'll be back with the solution. Right, let me have a look in the chat then and see how you're getting on. And yeah, 
Yes, perfect. I can see lots of pizzas and burgers in the chat. Wonderful. So, yes, if I show you the solution, then I quite agree. The frequency of pizza is 16 and the item with the highest frequency will be burger. So let me once again go and share my screen so that I can go and build that up for you. So I'll share my screen like so and we'll just wait a moment for that to appear like so. Then let me go and minimise the demos and I'll bring up my exercises like that. Then what I need to do is go into that table. I go to insert and pivot table like so. I will put my pivot table in D1 like that. And then I need to go and display the food for the rows and then I will put customer into the values like so which gives me my pivot table like that. So we can see that pizza has got 16 and burger has got the highest frequency at 33. And if I wanted to I could double click on count of customer and I could change this to say frequency like so. Good, right, let's move on. Let me find my demos again, like so, and I will go on to my next tab where we'll be looking at how we deal with the frequencies for quantitative data. Now, on this tab, I have pulled out the tip amounts. What we saw when we were looking for frequencies with our text-based qualitative data, we could use a pivot table to draw out the frequencies. So we'll try doing this here. I'll go into my table. I'll choose insert and pivot table. I will put it into D1 like so. And then I'll put tip amount for the rows and then customer for the values like that. Now, this time we can see that using a pivot table by default is perhaps not as illuminating as we would want it to be. If we scroll down, we can see that it has listed each of the tip amounts, which is quite correct. And what we can find is that there is a frequency of one for every single one of them. Now, what we're really wanting to achieve here is some sort of impression of what's going on with the data, you know, what's popular, what isn't. What we can do in this case is group the data. And this is something that you will very often have to do when it comes to quantitative data, because it's data, remember, that can be measured so that you're going to get different degrees of precision. Now, if you've been on my pivot tables training, you will know that we can group our tip amounts by selecting one of the tip amounts, like that in this case, the very first row. We then go up to the pivot table analyze menu. We choose group selection and then choose group selection again, like that. And this brings up the grouping window. So how do we want to group this data? Well, by default, it's given me the start and end points, the highest and lowest values. So I'm going to say that it will start at a zero. It will end at 25 and it will go up by five each time. So we've got zero, 25 and five in there. I'll now click on OK. And there are our frequencies. So we can see that we have got 14 in zero to five. 24 in 5 to 10, which is the most popular, and then it dwindles down. So we've got one for 20 to 25. And again, I could change this heading to the frequency like so. I can double check that it shows count, and it does. And again, if I wanted to, I could display these frequencies on a pivot chart by clicking the pivot chart option like that.
and resizing it so it doesn't cover the data like that. Now, when you have got numbers-based quantitative data, using a pivot table is just one of the options that you have for finding the frequencies. So I'm going to show you some of the other methods because I'm sure that you will have a favourite out of them. The next option is we can use a histogram. What we do is go into the table, we then go up to the insert menu, within there we look for the statistical group like that, we open that up and we choose the histogram chart that looks like so. Now what this will give you is a bunch of different bins, as they're called in histogram speak, so bins mean intervals, and it will then show you the frequency for each bin. Now, by default, it will decide for itself what those bin widths are and what the limits of them are. You can go and format either the data series or the axis to get them showing the data in the right sort of format that you want. Other options that you can use, though, there is a frequency function. In order to use the frequency function, you need to do a little bit of preliminary work. First of all, you need to tell it what the upper limits of the bins are, so what the intervals are that it needs to find frequencies for. So I will put bin upper limits just there, like so, and I'll also put in a frequency heading there. Now, under the bin upper limits heading, I'm going to put in 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25, like so. So, all of the upper limits for my intervals. One thing to notice with this approach is that I have got my bins spaced equally apart, but if you're using the frequency function, that doesn't have to be the case. So if you wanted to have odd-sized frequencies, uh, odd-sized bin um, widths, then you can do so. Now, the next bit will vary depending on what version of Excel you are using. I'll use the Microsoft 365 version first because that is the simplest. What you do, you go to the first cell where you want your frequencies to appear. So in my case, that will be E2. You then type equals frequency, open parenthesis, and then you need to pass it to two things. First of all, the data, and that is the tip amounts. So to provide that, I'm going to go into cell B2, the very first cell, and then I want to select everything in that column. The shortcut for doing that is if you press Control, Shift, and then the down arrow key like that, and that will select everything like so. We then put in a comma or semicolon, depending on your international settings, and then we need to specify the bin upper limits by passing it the range we've just entered. So that's going to be D2 through to D6, like that. We then put in a closing parenthesis. And then if you are using Microsoft 365, we can hit return and we get those results. So it returns a dynamic array that fills out the values for however many values that the function returns. So we get the same values as we had with our pivot table. Now, if you aren't using Microsoft 365, but you're using an older version, you can still use this function, but it is a little bit fiddly. I'm putting my heading there. Then what you need to do is go to the top cell, so F2 in my case, and then you need to select all of the cells that you want the function to complete with values. 
So I have selected here the range of F2 through to F7. And then you need to go up to the formula bar and then you type in your formula. So that's going to be equals frequency. Open parenthesis. We go to the first tip amount. We press Control, Shift and Down to select all of those. We then put in a comma or semicolon. Then we select the bin upper limits. So that's going to be the range of D2 through to D6. We then put in a closing parenthesis, but don't hit return. What you need to do instead, if you're using an older version of Excel, is do Control, Shift, and either return or enter, like that. So it's a little bit fiddly if you're using those versions, but you can still use the frequency function, and it will return those results. Now, as well as finding frequencies using functions through histograms and the pivot table, you can also use the analysis tool pack. So this seems like a good opportunity for getting to grips with what that's all about and how we begin using that tool. What we do is go to the data menu and then as long as you've got the analysis tool pack loaded, you'll see an option on the very right that says data analysis. When you click that, you get a window that appears looking like this. And you'll see within there that there's a whole load of analysis tools that you can use, mostly for statistics. Now, we need to scroll through here and look for the tool that says histogram like that. So we select that tool, histogram, and then we click on OK, like so. Next, it asks us for a few things. So first of all, we want to specify where the data comes from, the tip amounts. So I'm going to pass it the range from B1, and then I'll use the control shift down trick again, like that, to select it down to B51. So the range of that is B1 through to B51. Next, we need to specify the bin range. So I'm going to put in there D1 through to D6, like that. Next, we have got a labels checkbox. Now, notice that when I chose the input range and the bin range, I chose B1 and D1. And those cells contain labels. So I need to tell the analysis tool pack that by selecting that labels box there. Then I need to tell it where to output the data. So let me put it in a D9. I think that's nicely out of the way. And then the next thing that you can do is specify any extra things that you want this tool to output. What I think I will do is choose the chart output here, which means that it will just output a histogram for me. So I can now click on OK and we get these results. So we get the same frequencies as before, and we also get a histogram, well, really a column chart that they're calling a histogram that shows us those results. One thing to note when you're using the analysis tool pack, a lot of the time it will output just the values, not the formulas. So if the underlying data changes, then you may need to regenerate the data using the analysis tool pack again. Whereas things like the frequency function are dynamic, so if the data changes, then they should pick up the changes automatically. Now with that, I will stop sharing my screen again. So we'll go back over to the slides window and we'll review that. What we've seen then is when you have got quantitative data, there are quite a few different ways in which you can generate the frequencies. First of all, you can use a pivot table and display the results on a pivot chart. The thing to remember here, though, is that a lot of the time 
you're probably going to need to group the data in some way because quantitative data is numbers based and it's very often things that are measured. So there can be different degrees of precision. Your other option is to use a histogram, which will display the data on a chart split into bins. Then we have got the frequency function, which can be a little bit fiddly at first, but it is pretty useful. In order to use this function, you need to do some prep work. First of all, you need to decide on the data bins or intervals. You then put the upper limit of each bin in a single column. Then you need to select your output range, starting from the top cell. You then put in your frequency function, and then you have to remember to press Control, Shift and Enter. If you're using Microsoft 365, then you can take a little bit of a shortcut. So you don't need to select the entire output range or press Control, Shift and Enter. Just hitting Enter or Return will do the trick. Finally, we've got the analysis tool pack. And with this one, you can once again put your upper limits for each bin in a single column. Then you go to the data menu, you choose data analysis, and then you select the histogram tool. And you then use that tool to complete the input range, the bin range, and select a destination for the output. And then optionally, if you want to display a chart, you can choose the chart output checkbox as well. So we have spent time looking at the different options available for finding frequencies. So it's now time for you to try that out for yourself. If you go to the exercises workbook and go along to the second tab, you'll find another table. And this time it contains a table of the times taken to load a web page in milliseconds. What I want you to do is find frequencies by grouping the data into bins that have upper limits of 500, 1000, 1500, 2000, 2500 and 3000. And I would like to know what the frequency is for the bin with an upper limit of 1500. So we try that out using whichever method you prefer or whichever one you want to just try out. When you've got the answer, please put it into the chat. I'll switch my mic off to let you get on with that in peace for probably another three minutes. And after that time, I'll be back with the solution.
Right, let me look in the chat then and see how you're getting on. And yeah, perfect. Lots of 31s appearing there. So yes, I quite agree with you. The frequency of the bin with an upper limit of 1500 is indeed 31. Now let me go and build this up for you. And I think I'm going to do this using the frequency function because I think that is the trickiest way of doing it and it will just give you a little bit more practice with well, at least seeing that approach. So over in the exercises workbook then, what I will do first of all is go to C1 and I will type bin per limit, assuming I can type like that. And then I'll put frequency next to it, like so. And then I need to put my bin upper limit starting from C2. So I'll put 500,000, 1500. And then to save myself some time, I will grab hold of those like that and copy them all downwards like that, getting Excel to complete the pattern for me. Now, in order to use the frequency function, if you're using an older version of Excel, first of all, go into cell D2 like that, select that cell. Then we will extend that down. So we're selecting down to cell D8 like that. We then go into the formula bar. We type equals. We go and select the first cell for time taken, so A2. And, oh, it's not done it. Let me backtrack slightly. Let me start again. We select that. We then extend that downwards. We put in equals. We could see. Open parenthesis. We select the first cell of A2 like that. We select Control, Shift and Down to go down to A101 like that. Then we put in a comma and we choose the bin array. So that's going to be C2 through to C7. We put in a closing parenthesis and we then use Control, Shift and Enter or Return. And it completes them all like so. So the bin with an upper limit of 1500 is going to be the value there of 31. Good. Right, so let me move on by minimizing the exercises. And then I'll bring up the demos like this and I'll move along to my next tab like so. Now, so far, what we've seen is how to generate frequencies and we've also used pivot charts and histograms to help us visualize those frequencies. There's another sort of chart that we can use though that will help us visualize the data in a different kind of way and it's called a box and a whisker chart and it's a chart that will show you certain characteristics about the data. So what I'll do is create one. So I need to go into my table and then I will go to the insert menu. Then I go over to my histogram section here, my statistical chart section. And then I'll choose the box and whisker chart like that. Now I'm going to just move this out the way a little bit. And I'm also going to just tweak this to get it to show some data labels because that will help us understand the chart. So I'll go to the chart design menu. I'll open up the quick layout and I'm going to choose the second layout along like that. Good, so we've now got some labels against our chart. So what's going on with this chart then and what is it telling us? Well, as you can see, the box and whisker chart does indeed have a box and also these whiskers at the top and at the bottom. 
if we focus on the whiskers first, what they show us are the lowest and the highest number within our salaries. Now, in order to find these using formulas, we can use the min and max functions. So let me move over here. We've got max. We find using equals max, open parenthesis, and then we select the first cell for the salaries. We do control shift and down. We put in the closing parenthesis. We hit return and we get our result that 